Hello and welcome to Gradient's weekly business roundup for the week ending 28 January 2022. First look at this week's main stories. Indian support upsized to $2.4 billion. Interest rates increased by 50 basis points. 40 billion rupees to compensate local farmers. Electricity supply is affected by multiple factors. We will also briefly look at other notable developments that made it across to our news desk and wrap up with a capital markets update. In our top story this week, according to a statement from the Indian High Commission, Vasya Rajapaksha, Minister of Finance and Dr. S. Jay Shankar, External Affairs Minister of India, positively noted the extension of 400 million US dollars to Sri Lanka under the SARC currency swap arrangement and the deferral of ACU settlement of $515 million by two months. Moreover, extension of the Indian credit facility of $1 billion for importing food, essential items and medicine as well as a $500 million credit line for importing fuel from India was also discussed. Such cooperation comes amid steps taken by Sri Lanka and India to jointly modernise the Trincomalee oil tank farms which is slated to boost the confidence of investors as well as the country's energy security. The Monetary Board of the Central Bank increased the policy rates by 50 basis points. As such, the Standing Deposit Facility Rate and the Standing Lending Facility Rate are now 5.5% and 6.5% respectively. The Central Bank noted that the increases will curtail the possible build-up of underlying demand pressures, helping to ease pressures in the external sector, thus promoting greater macroeconomic stability. Additionally, it mandated all registered tourist establishments to accept foreign exchange in respect of services rendered to persons resident outside Sri Lanka and the extended payment of an additional 8 rupees per US dollar for workers' remittances paid over the incentive of 2 rupees per dollar. Workers' remittances in December was $325.2 million, down 60% year-on-year from $813 million a year ago. For the full year, remittances declined to a 10-year low of $5.5 billion, down by a significant 23% year-on-year. Such decline since June this year is largely due to the central bank pegging the USD LKR rate, which is materially lower than the 230 to 250 offered by informal channels. The cabinet approved 40 billion rupees to compensate paddy farmers for losses to their crops as a result of the ban on agrochemicals. According to Mahindananda Alugamage, Minister of Agriculture, compensation will be dispersed among 1.5 million paddy farmers who cultivated during the Maha season. He further noted that in some areas the drop in production was 10%, while in certain parts it was around 20 to 30%. Moreover, the paddy marketing board began purchasing paddy from farmers at 75 rupees per kilo, up from 50 rupees. However, According to Daily FT, citing Namal Karnaratna, national organizer of the All Ceylon Farmers Federation, noted that the farming community is not ready to accept neither the guaranteed price nor any compensation unless it is offered in a blanket form. Further stating that cost of production had increased and that a bag of fertilizer is now sold at around 15,000 to 20,000 rupees. On a related note, Sri Lanka is to be granted 1 million tons of rice from China. Sri Lanka is facing a power crisis as the Ceylon Electricity Board was hit by a shortage of diesel, resulting in the shutdown of the Kalintisa power plant, the 300 megawatt local plant, coal plant being out of commission, and the Sapagaskanda power plant affected due to the lack of supply of heavy furnace oil. The central bank issued funds to obtain fuel from two vessels at the Colombo port, co cabinet spokesperson Minister Uday Gamantila said. Accordingly, out of the 37,000 metric tons of fuel in the ships, 10,000 metric tons will be given to the CEB. With debt of CEB to Ceylon Petroleum Corporation exceeding 91 billion rupees and limited dollars to purchase fuel, Uday Gamanpilla informed that fuel will be provided to the Ceylon Electricity Board only if dollars are provided. In other news, according to data from the Central Bank, the Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index declined to 58.1 in December 2021 from 61.9 a month earlier. The drop was mainly attributable to a decrease in employment as well as increases in new orders, production and stock purchase rising at a slower rate than in November. 
Respondents mentioned that though they wanted to build up stocks significantly ahead of the Chinese New Year holidays, their extent was limited due to import-related issues. Encouragingly, service sector PMI rose to 62.4 in December to reach the highest level since March 2015. Increases in new businesses, business activities, employment expectations and a falling backlog of work drove the index higher. According to the SLTDA, 58,906 tourists have arrived in Sri Lanka within the first three weeks of January. According to Prasanna Ramatunga, the Minister of Tourism, to further boost tourism, a global communication campaign targeting the eight main source markets will be launched in the first quarter of the year and Sri Lanka Tourism Promotions Bureau is to roll out several short-term initiatives. Moreover, Emirates announced plans to add five more flights to Sri Lanka offering customers 26 weekly flights to Colombo. Sri Lanka fell 8 places to 102nd out of 180 countries in the latest Corruption Perception Index compiled by Transparency International. This is the lowest position for the country. Types of public sector corruption captured in the index include bribery, diversion of public funds, effective prosecution of corruption cases, adequate legal frameworks, access to information and legal protection for whistleblowers, journalists and investigators. Now let's take a look at the weekly movement of the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index at the Colombo Stock Exchange. The All Share Price Index declined to 12,902, falling 3.5% from a week earlier. Turnover reached a high of 18 billion rupees on January 24th due to the two crossings in JKH. The rupee declined to 202 rupees per dollar this week dropping 0.4% from a week earlier. In other market news, Hello Clothing IPO was oversubscribed on its opening day. On offer was approximately 267 million ordinary voting shares at 15 rupees a share. The issue amounting to 4 billion rupees is equivalent to a 20.5% stake in the company. John Keyes Holdings PLC refinanced its $395 million loan syndicated loan at Cinnamon Life which was due for payment in July this year. It was done through a $225 million long-term loan facility and a six-month bridging facility of $100 million. On January 24th, the ASPI calculation methodology was revised from full market capitalization weighting to public floated adjusted market capitalization. Post revision, Expo Lanka was the largest by market capitalization followed by LLC and Brown's Investments. And that's a wrap for this week. Until we see you again next time, thank you for watching. Stay safe.